Albert Einstein was once asked what he thought the most important question was. His reply? He claimed that the most important question was, is the universe a friendly place? In other words, is the universe inclined to be supportive of us and concerned for us and caring about us or not? Well, many believe that of all the writings of faith, the 23rd Psalm offers perhaps the finest theological answer to this question of the universe's potential friendliness. The 23rd Psalm is a small jewel, really, comprised in Hebrew of a mere 57 words. And our friend, Rabbi Harold Kushner, points out several probing truths about this little psalm in his book on the subject, truths that can calm those of us who worry and fret about the friendliness of this universe, which God has so graciously given to us for our home. Let me share some of Rabbi Kushner's insights. A first burst of truth that jumps out from this psalm is found in its opening line, the Lord is my shepherd. In other words, despite this being a difficult, complicated, intricate, demanding, unpredictable, challenging, strenuous, grueling, and frightening world, we can get up every morning to face it knowing that there's someone who cares about us, guides us, and tries to keep us safe. Or to put it another way, the psalmist is saying, we are not alone, for the shepherd never leaves the sheep. The newspaper headlines may still speak of violence and tragedy. The news bulletins on radio and television may still be alarming, but we can face these things with courage and confidence, knowing we're not facing them all by ourselves. Another burst of truth that jumps out at us from this psalm is found in the line, I shall not want. This is a clear affirmation that we need not worry and fret about resources. We'll have all we need. Now, some religious traditions support something like renunciation of the world as a way to happiness. The theory is that if we do not want things, we'll not be disappointed in not getting them. But that is really not what the psalm is promoting. It is simply saying that while our every extravagant desire may not be met, we will receive in this world by God's generous hand as much as we need. We will even find through such simple and fulfilling gifts as green pastures and still waters the very restoration of our souls, learning to truly appreciate the many gifts of God that He offers us to help us to put all other desires in perspective. Or as Rabbi Kushner says, the Lord is my shepherd, what more do I need? An additional truth which comes from this psalm is found in the line, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. How do you face this shadow of death? Do you fear it as an evil or take some other view of death's shadow? As Rabbi Kushner says, we can respond to the inevitability of death in one of three ways. First, we might choose the path of self-indulgence. Eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we may die. Or second, we can become despairing. What is the point of striving for anything or caring for anything since nothing lasts? Vanity, vanity, all is vanity. Or third, we can decide that since our time is limited, we should make the most of it. Teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. This little psalm encourages gaining a wise heart by learning to trust in the ever-present goodness of God. In fact, perhaps the summation of the psalm could be said to be found in its last line about God's ever-present goodness. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I don't know what your experience has been. I don't know if the bottom has ever fallen out for you. But if it has, then perhaps you have found, like the psalmist, that down in the deepest, darkest, dankest, most depressing and desperate bottom you ever reached, God was not only real, but God was there. In that darkness you may have seen the light of God with much more clarity than usual. You may have discovered for yourself the true character of God. No, we probably won't see a God of fairy tales and happy endings when the bottom falls out for us. Rather, what we'll see in the depths is the kind of God that Abraham and Sarah and Jacob and David and Mary and even Jesus saw. We'll see a God who shares his home with us and dwells with us forever. What a blessing to be part of God's family. What a privilege to know God better and better as we accept his guidance of us as a good shepherd through all of this life and beyond. Recognizing this, how could we ever doubt that the universe is a friendly place? a very friendly place.